I've been told by everybody up on this roof that they're all off the roof. I am on the roof of Explosion 4. Got fire through the roof of the fire building in the entire rear section. Please, I was never given the payday. Has you been accounted for? Okay. 610B, now is the main date, 610B. I'm out uh, here, we got a fire. One and a half story, single family dwelling, fire shown from the second floor, give me a second alarm on this. See up there, the top floor, I got people hanging out the top floor windows with a baby. Commercial building, uh, a lot of fire, a lot of smoke, go ahead and strike a third alarm on my orders on this. Got people on the front fire escape here with windows fences below them, we need somebody up there. Yeah, let them know we got a job. I'm pulling up now. Second alarm, I got a one-story single-family frame. Heavy fire showing from the attic. So we're using all hands. We got one line stretch, fire on the fourth floor. Second line being stretched. Primary stretches are underway. Hey, welcome back to Old School. I'm Chief Rick Lasky, along with my good buddy, Chief John Salka. Um, and right now, buddy, um, I, I guess accumulation-wise... I talked to our good buddy, Jeff Bryant. We'll talk about Jeff in a second here. Jeff, uh, for our listeners, Jeff is the chief in Amboy, Illinois, which is about an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes, John, right? West of Chicago. And yeah. I think they're up to like three feet total uh, so far. And, uh, you know, the pictures we've been seeing from there and with Nick over Sublet, which is next to him. And then Gordon Nord and Tim, Tim Olk. I mean, our photographers from Chicago, you know, chief Gordon Nord, chief in Lyons, Illinois, but, uh, some of the pictures, uh, you know, I guess our buddies in Minneapolis and our friends up in Canada are like, really, what's the big deal? <laughs> but, uh, but you, you, uh, I heard something from you the other day, buddy, that I've never heard before. Well, you, know, you always go on about how much you love the snow and can't wait to get out and plow and get out there with your, you know, your, your tractor and all this other stuff and your quad and all the many, like the whole warehouse full of appliances you had. They're like a, you know, the Department of Transportation. But you said something the other day that caught my attention. You said, you know, I think I'm done <laughs> with the snow right now. What the I, hell happened? You know what? And, and it's the truth. <laughs> I, we had about two feet on one day, and a, a day and a half it took for it to come down, I guess. And I said, I'm I'm good right now. If this slows up for a while, I'll be, I'll be okay. Yep. <laughs> oh, I told, I, at first I told Jamie, I said, how many times has John said, oh, I can't wait for the snow to get here? I said, I've never heard him. In 30 plus years, say, uh, I'm, I'm done with it for right now. I'm, but, I'm uh, about done with that. Yep. Yep. So, you guys uh, uh, still, I mean, I know uh, there was a little bit of a shortage, but I got my second COVID vaccination. Um, now, Terry McGrath, our, our Hump Day Hangout co host, um, Terry, um, he took his second one, John, and he got sick for like 24 hours. And then our good buddy, I heard Homer, that from somebody last night. A couple of guys last night were talking about that, saying, that their wives and and brothers and stuff uh, took the second shot and was uh, like out of business for a day or two, you know? Oh, and, you know, Terry had it for 24 hours. Now, our, you know, Terry's with Louisville, of course, we have for most of our listeners know that. And then our good buddy, Homer Robertson, one of the assistants used in Fort Worth, Homer got his second one, John, and he was, I mean, he was thrown up all night and sick and all. But you know what? I, I kind of smiled and said, you know, if this thing's working, I'd rather have a day of misery than be laid up Once, in a hospital on a ventilator. Be weeks in the, in the hospital. Right? Yeah, ex exactly. Well, look what happened with my wife, Jamie. So, but are they doing better with the, uh, getting, you know, some doses and stuff now in, in your area, New York, or huh? are, they do, are they doing better with getting more doses and everything? Uh, I think it's picking up a little bit. That little, that little lull that they had there about a week or two ago is, I haven't heard anything about that. Um, so I, I think they have, I don't know, producing more, shipping more, whatever it is. Oh, cool. And lastly, you guys are getting ready to put a, uh, a new ladder truck in service uh, for South Blooming Grove. The guys guys must be excited. I, it's always fun when you get a, a new yep. rig or even a refurbished rig. Nowadays, they refurbish rigs. They're, they're brand new when they're done refurbishing. They're, they're like brand new. They were loading up last night, putting stuff in the compartments, and we're, we're well, excuse me, shopping around for a guy to come and give us a price on uh, – you know, doing all the racks and the and the bins and the trays, you know, for the compartments for the tools. Well, you need to turn off the security cameras you have outside the firehouse because uh, I'm getting I'm going to be getting on an airplane pretty quick and coming up there. And I, I'm just going to help you out. You tell the guys I'm just going to make sure the old ladder truck is running, the battery stay charged. I'll, oh yeah, I'll fly, we'll I'll fly, fly up there. To... I'll fly up there and drive around the block once in a while. You know, drive around the block once and never come back. Maybe you know. <laughs> Well, hey, that we've been would, we've been re that would work just fine. <laughs> we've been rebooking our classes, and uh, 
doing a lot of virtual stuff. We just uh, uh, helped the volunteer fire department out. Great membership, great people. Um, just uh, a little meeting on some leadership and um, working through some issues. I thought it was very productive. I know you did as well. Uh, so folks, we're, we're doing a lot of virtual stuff now, um, you know, with departments and at conferences and with, with individual smaller groups like, you know, chiefs or officers and that. But uh, John, you and I talked about, uh, uh, you know, this before going live here. Um, there's been a couple of great posts on social media lately. Um, and, you know, the, the one was, and oh, I, I'm going to look it up real quick here. Um, they pulled up, they went to a residential structure on a automatic fire alarm, pulled up, got off the rig, dressed, tools, everything, nothing showed from the outside, and boom, they had a good job inside. And how many times we heard that? I've seen so many videos. All of a sudden lately, you know how things run in spurts. It's like I couldn't scroll through it. I was seeing, um, and maybe that one got them going, but another one where, you know, this whole, you and I have caught, you know, the phrase we've used it. We, we've talked, expect fire, expect something, you know, our good friend, Bill Carey from firefighter nation and fire, fire rescue. Um, he says it all the time, expect fire. Um, you and I've talked about it for decades now about, you know, every time you go out the door, you should be expected a fire. Right. I mean, let, let's talk about that just to start the attitude. Right. Right. And, and, and it really goes, I mean, listen, you We've been to, I've been to boxes, I've been to alarms that were for odors, uh, you know, odors of gas, odors of paint, you know, odors of smoke. I've been to, I've been to uh, alarms that were automatic alarms. I've been to sprinkler alarms. I've been to smoke alarms. I've been to, and all of them were fires. All not Now listen, every sprinkler alarm you go to is not going to be a fire. Every smoke alarm is not going to be a fire and every odor is not going to be a fire, but you should be expecting it. You should be expecting it to be a fire. And when it's not, it's so much easier to scale back and scale down than it is to suddenly run around and try and catch up to, holy cow, let me get my gear. Where's my mask? Uh, did you drop a line? You know, and all that other stuff. Well, and, and you know, we've, we've seen actually line of duty deaths that have occurred where people have showed up half dressed, not dressed, without their tools. The whole, we'll talk about that in a second, the lazy of just nothing showing and all that, um, you know, when, 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 when you roll out the door expecting to see something, expecting to, you know, and, and we brought this up a couple of times in classes before, you know, you know, I've said for years, my, my, my kind of rules have always been as a fire chief, every time we go out the door, we're going to fire. I don't care if it's the second time or third time today, we're going to Salka Enterprises on an automatic fire alarm. And the first two times we went there, there were false activations. Mm -hmm. This time, it's on fire. This time, I don't care. It's on fire. And then the second, you know, second rule is, you know, there's no fire unless we say there's no fire. I mean, you know, just like we're talking about, unless, you know, I appreciate people saying, ah, there's nothing here that, or, you know, God bless our law enforcement partners go, yeah, there's nothing, tell them there's nothing showing. Yeah, thank you. And then the third one there, you know, there, there's nobody in there unless we say there's no one in there because I don't want to be the one in firehouse magazine or fire engineering with the X between the couch and the window or whatever, because they told us everybody was out and everybody wasn't out. And the last one is out. It's not out unless we say it's out. Go ahead, buddy. Right. You know, I want to touch on that. Uh, nothing, nothing showing thing because I'm actually in the last couple of days, for some reason I was thinking about, it, I, uh, the neighbor in town the other day uh, had an alarm and I heard the call one get there and he didn't say nothing showing uh, nothing, nothing evidence on arrival, you know, uh, but, but then it got me thinking about that nothing showing thing. You know, now saying nothing evident on arrival, as far as I'm concerned, it's just, you're just mixing the words up. You're saying the same exact thing. And, and I argue with people all the time and say, well, you know, we just want to let them know. So, so I came up with some new thoughts on that. And, and one of them was, so, you, so you, you hear a guy give that, whether it's a company officer or a chief, engine two on scene, uh, nothing shown, make an investigation. And that's what he said, nothing shown, make an investigation. So my question to the guy that makes that transmission is, why did you say nothing showing? Why didn't you just say engine two on scene? Now, obviously, when you don't say smoke show and work and fire, when you don't say that, that speaks volumes, right? So right, right. engine two on scene, and then you say make an investigation. Now, change that. The, the only thing anybody could think is, well, this is still up in the air. On the scene, make an investigation. Now, when you say on scene, 
nothing showing, making an investigation. My question to you is, why are you saying those two words, nothing showing? Explain that to me. You know, and if you explain it just like I'm laying it out here, explain why you said nothing showing. What does that add to the, what does that add? What information or what tone does that add to the, to the message? And that is a negative, negative thing to say, because when you say nothing showing, you are specifically saying, you are saying, stand down. You are saying, this looks like it's going to be nothing. You are leading people in the opposite direction of what you and I are here talking about today. Expect fire. You're doing the exact opposite of that. You're saying, this is probably nothing. Don't worry about it. You know, now, now what is the chief? The first rig may not have even left the firehouse yet. Do you think everybody's really hustling? Hey guys, hurry up. Chief said nothing showing. Let's go. Let's go. No, it does. The, it has the exact opposite effect. Oh, slow. Instead yeah, take it I, easy. Slow down. Right, Tommy. Tommy. No, no, no. Slow, slow down. Slow down. Chief's on the scene. Nothing showing. Get your gear. We're, we're going to ride down there. And I and I think it's a it, I think it's a terrible phrase to use. I think there's there's no valid message being transmitted by that. And if anything, there's a negative connotation. There's a there's a slow down message given when you give that. And you and I know we already said it, and so does everybody else that's listening. Everybody, everybody has been to at least one. I've been to dozens of boxes, alarms, fires, where we pulled up and there literally was nothing showing. I'm not in the habit of saying that. I don't use that phrase. So it didn't make a difference to me. 1A Battalion on scene, right? 1084. And also a minute later, 1A Battalion of Bronx, transmit the box. I got smoke showing. And, and that's a perfect that's a perfect way for it to for it to, to open up, perfect way for it to proceed, you know? Well, and I like how you said it because it does set people back in their heels, you know, when you say just nothing showing. Now, and, and and for our listeners, we're not we're not talking about a separation of we're responding to an automatic fire alarm, AFA versus someone called smoke and ability or structure fire. It's it's the same, same. If 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 someone if you're making somebody this I, I never understood, John, you're making somebody spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in most cases to put an alarm system in an apartment complex or in a business when it activates you go nah, just send one engine it's probably nothing you know and and they pull up and it's so much easier on a fire line they go oh, we're out not they're showing and 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 I, and I like what you said before because what i like to hear from my guys was you know what was little solenger 166 we're out we got a two-story single family dwelling uh we got nothing showing on three sides that, that's telling you Maybe you're the BC or the extant engine. You, you're looking around back because you, you said something I'm on a can of, John. Right now in my head, I'm buzzing with how many times we were at places where there was nothing showing and we had a job. And, and the, the one story I want to tell, I think you've heard me talk about this one. Um, Mary, the, 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 the bank across the street from our headquarters station, Louisville, um, I think it was American Bank or whatever, uh, American Bank or US Bank. Anyway, n- doesn't matter. About 10, 10, 30-ish in the morning, I'm in quarters. Everybody's out doing their thing. It's a weekday. They bump out a structure fire at the bank. This is in the middle. You you know what I'm talking about. It's You've been there. It's in the middle of a shopping plaza, right? It's like you got the, you have AutoZone and CVS and all that stuff behind it. And this is kind of out in front. And one of the, the BC ends up calling and saying, hey, is there a chief closer? I'm on the east side. I'm looking at me. I'll take it. So I get out to the buggy. I, I take off. And like I said, I'm literally going a block, two blocks. And I hear the ambulance pull up first, a little so medic one, we're out with a one story uh, banking institution or financial institution, a banking institution with nothing showing on all four sides. Good one. He told me nothing showing on four sides. We'll be investigating. The truck, Mark Lee was the captain. He's the chief in, um, you've heard me talking about the chief in Garland, Texas now. Mark been there for a while. Mark, great, great boss, great truck captain. He pulls up little so truck one, we're out, you know, <clears throat> same size up, you know, as the medic, we'll be investigating. I pull up, take command. I'm watching them. They're, every one of them, every single one of them, John, got off. There's five guys in the tower ladder, got off f- like your guys, fully dressed, hoods, air packs, tools. Mark had a, you know, he had his, his lantern, his flashlight in his hand, his one hand and his officer's tool in the other. They go walking. People from the banker wire side, it's sunny. It's sunny. There's not a cloud in the sky. There's no smell, nothing. And, and you, I think you've heard me he gets inside, he goes, Command from interior. I go, he goes, give me a two and a half. Come up through the front door right now. I'm like, or ASAP. I went, copy that. Engine one, when you get here, we need a two and a half through the front door. Be truck one. Now, you know me, my curiosity, I, I take a quick, I go over there, I open up the door. I, I, I take like 
eight steps inside and look around the corner. They're on their knees masking up and there's fire and black shit rolling over their heads. And he's pointing. And I'm like, holy crap. You know, I, I turn around by the time I got to the doors, I had zero visibility. That's how fast this thing, you know what I'm saying? And I, I've thought about that because if they had went about this, John, like other people's in the a, in a fire service, right? They would have been running out for the rest of their gear, running out for their tools or their air packs. How many times do you see guys, they come running out, we got a fire. I'm like, we're the freaking right. fire department. How did you show up with nothing, you know? And, and and figure this out. You see it. You see a team of two or three guys sort of meandering, strolling into a bank, into a real estate office, right? For, for an automatic alarm. They got their bunker pants on, suspenders, and their helmet, and they're carrying tools. And they're walking in like, we'll check this out. Why bother going in? Why bother going in <laughs> just like that? What are you going to have to do if there is something? You're going to have to run back out. <clears throat> just yeah. doesn't make any – nobody's really thinking. Nobody, nobody's really doing situational awareness, right? And nobody's really thinking – this is something or this could be something because otherwise they wouldn't go in there like that. You can't fight the fire half dressed. Well, and, and again, here, like you said, you know, then you might as well send the, 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 the mailman or lady in there. Hey, you going in there? Let me know what you got in there. Just holler out when you come back out with, you know, if you pick up the mail, they've got, you know, I'm right. just, I mean, we're the freaking fire department. And I just, you know, that, that's been my thing, John is just, you know, what's, what's the phrase. And I love the phrase you use about, you know, getting ready. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what's that? You don't have to get ready if you stay ready. I forget where I heard that, but that's got to be one of the best phrases, best words, you know, for the fire service that, that I've really ever heard. If you, if you don't have to get ready, if you stay ready and boy, isn't that the truth? You don't have to get geared up. You don't have to run back to the rig. If you get up, if you get on the rig dressed at the firehouse, like the guys in 45 and 58 place I retired from, right? The, the engine what did you say? What did you say to those guys? Let me ask you. So, you, you know, 45, let, let's talk about 45, 58, you know, 48, when you're on engine 48, never, never dipped under 6,000 runs a year, tons of fires. You know, I watched your guys, I watched your guys run out on what some people would call a BS kind of call ready to do battle every single I'm maybe they had an off day when I wasn't there. Cause I wasn't there every day with you, but so as a battalion chief or as the captain of 48, how did you set those expectations for you guys? I mean, you know, I'd like to think that every probie gets out of Academy and doesn't have to be told to put their shit on for every call and their tools and everything else. But what, how do you stress that to your guys, John? You know, I mean, well, number one, it is true. The FDNY Academy is, is an excellent, excellent place. They really do break them in. They really do get them on the right page. They get them going down, you know, with the right attitude before they even leave there. And they tell them, you're going to get to the firehouse, you're going to see all different things. Here's what you should be doing. If you work for a good officer, here's what you'll be doing. And then, you know, you look at places like 45 and 48, they've just really been eternally busy. You look back in the 70s, you look back in the late 60s, uh, early 80s, 48, 45, 56, 88, 30. All those companies were always in the top 25. You know, they might miss it one year or be number 26 or something. But And, and that right there breeds being ready you know when you go out the door and nine nine out of ten times it is something then you get, you get used to being dressed and you get used to the not inconvenience but the routine of getting dressed before you get on the ring if you don't get dressed in the firehouse if you don't get dressed before you leave you're really not going to get dressed until you get there you, right. you really can't get dressed while you're responding in a rig with a coat and all this other stuff it's just very it's impractical so and you've seen pictures and i've used pictures for seminars you see 58 trucks sitting in the bay and you, you can see literally five or six sets of gear all on the outside of the rig. Nobody's got their gear on the inside of the rig. They're all the gears on the outside of the rig. Buck up the boots with the bucket pants rolled down with the with the suspenders just right at each riding position. Point the coat point, hanging on a discharge point, or hanging on, you know. Toes are the boots. Point, I've always said that. You can tell because they've got them. They're, if they're near the rig, they're pointed like I can jump at them and jump. You know, it's not like... I, Right. Boots are facing Everything different the directions. The gloves is on the outside of the rig. The coat, and on top of the coat is what? The radio with the radio strap on top, because you're going to jump on your boots, put your suspenders, put your radio on, put your coat on top, and it's all taken off in that specific order in preparation for putting it back on at the next run. You know, and like you said, these these companies are doing four or five, 6,000 runs a year. Now there's companies even doing 7,000 runs a year, and it's just 
I don't see how there's any option. I don't see how any officer, any, well, you know, down here in Arizona, down here in, uh, in New Mexico, it's real hot in the summertime. If we got dressed every run, it'd be really hot. You know what? You know, you know what I like comparing it to? And we've never really talked about this, but I thought about it a little while ago. Cops. Think about cops. You think cops get a report of a, uh, a burglar, a report of a uh, armed robbery at the 7-Eleven. You think cops are driving there saying, ah, this is probably nothing. Probably just a kid with a fake gun, you know? Yeah. No. Cop, cops are going there. They, they probably get their guns out of the holsters already when they're on the way to a reported robbery. They're expecting, maybe even not hoping, but you know what I'm saying? They are expecting it to be a legitimate call. And, and we, on the other hand, some of us are, are driving there thinking, ah, this will be nothing, but ah, we'll, go, we'll hit the supermarket on the way back then. You know, and it's just really hard for me with my experience, although I've been in a lot of different places. I've been in a small volunteer fire department now that I'm retired that, that does, we'll be lucky to break 200 runs this year. And, but I've been in 48 engine as well and rescue three and squad one. So I've seen both sides of the coin, but I'll tell you what. Even slower places, even places that aren't in urban areas with large numbers of fires, you still got good places, like you said, like Jeff's place in Amboy oh. and, and others that are just well trained and 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 you know they know what to do and it's expected of them and it's enforced. Well, and you and I think back, John. You were, I think, you were standing outside Yankee Stadium. They're in the playoffs, get ready to go to World Series again. You were outside with with uh, with Maureen, your, your one of your daughters. And and we were actually we were doing we were doing our show our podcast the command post for uh, fire engineering, and we had Mike Lombardo re- uh, Mike Lombardo retired commissioner from Buffalo on you remember this one, and we were taking calls remember and the young lieutenant from North Carolina called you and I both love the Carolinas both Carolinas and uh, he called remember and he said he goes I just want to talk to you chief say I pick your brains a little bit he goes look I got a great crew remember this guy he goes I got a great crew, I mean when they're there golly they are just they, they nothing's dirty they do this they do that but i'll tell you you know when i when i when i go to train maybe to stretch a line or get the hearse tool out or whatever they're like ah you know we we, we haven't had a, a good cut job in a year we haven't been first in on a, on a on a fire in three years and people go three years i go well, wait a minute they've been second to a bunch of times but he says understand remember he goes we're in the newer part of town we just don't get the work he goes now the other shifts They've been to their fight. We've just missed. It's just the timing right now. We'll get ours, but how do I keep my guys motivated when it comes to training and get them to just, you know, believe that, look, we should be training just, they should be in New York city in the Bronx or Chicago on the West side or in Dallas. And, you know, you know, and I remember, you know, my, my thing's always been, well, the farther you are from the further you are from your last call, the closer you are your next one. And remember you and I, we asked Mike Lamar. So Mikey, what do you think? And Mike said, Mike said, you know what you tell them? The, the next time you remember this, he goes, remember, you, you know what you tell him the next time one of you guys says, well, why, why do we got to practice extrication? We, 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 we have it's been a year since the last cut job or last pin in, or why do we, we haven't had a fire, you know, three. And remember he said, as he goes, you know, he, he said, because every night when, when they go to bed and he said, they be in the public, you often refer to them as them, right? Those people out there, we're, we, we put our hands up to protect. He says, every night when they go to bed, when they lay their heads on their pillows, they're thinking of you. Not, 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 not like consciously where they're sitting there thinking, you know, you know, you know, while, while they're waiting, you think it, but they lay their heads on their, on their pillows, knowing that if they ever had to face the most God awful thing imaginable, being burned to death, being burned alive, that you, the firefighters coming to get them. And remember, Johnny said, it's not about how many fires you fight. It's always about the next fire you fight. You're always, you, you know, and I love that. It's like, that's why we throw ladders. That's why we get you, you know, and, and you know me, I'll send them home. I've done it before. It happens one time. Show up at one of my fires. When I was around fire, you show up at one of my fires without your gear on, what half your gear, without your tools. I remember one department showed up and I was at a third alarm and they walked. I want to give them a sign. I needed to put them work. They walked the whole block, John. They didn't have nothing on not their bunker pants, not thing. What do you need, Chief? I go, I need you guys in your gear and your tools. Well, they're back in the room. We figured we'd come down and figure out what you want. I go, tell you what, we got this. Go, you know, why don't you pick up and go home? Really? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Thanks. They got on their rig and left, and I struck a fourth alarm. And I remember their chief going, but you sent my guys home. I go, it's because they walked up with no tool. I don't know if they're, they're good at magic tricks or whatever, but how in God's name do you get off a piece of fire apparatus and an automatic fire alarm, fire alarm or a report of a fire without your stuff on? If your guys can do it, 
oh my God, all day long, night long. What what's the rest of our excuses? You know what I'm saying? And you know what happens? And and this is so true. And it's and it's unfortunate that it's true, but it is true. Is most of the time, places that stop getting ready and stop getting fully dressed and get partially dressed and the guys with the coats over their arms walking in and stuff like that. The the real problem is, is it works most of the time. That's the real problem. The real problem is they very rarely get caught short. Now you might get caught short and it's going to be a, a very bad day. Maybe hey John, tragic John, for you, maybe tragic for a John real quick. So does not wearing your seatbelt all the time. And so does Absolutely. not put an air pack on your back. Exactly. All the things that we talk about that are so important. Most of the time you can get away with not doing them and nothing's going to happen. And that confirms their, the way that they act. That confirms their activity. It confirms their behavior. They say, look, I haven't put my coat on going to a run in two years. And you know what? And the guy hasn't had a job in two years either. You know, once you have the job, then you're caught short. And again, this brings it to another, another topic that reaches out to service to the people that are waiting for us. You've got some nerve not getting dressed for your convenience, for oh, your I like that. I like that. You've got some nerve. To rescue. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I like that. i tell you what, I called a lot of people in on that one. And, you <clears> know, <throat> when I was a chief in the Bronx and bouncing around in other places, I told them, what, what are we doing here, Cap? Are we ready? And I got to tell you, I, didn't, I rarely said it to a captain. Most time, by the time a guy makes captain, they realize, you know what? Let's get this shit straight. Sometimes young lieutenants get a little lazy on that. And I'm like, hey, lieutenant, what are we doing here? You, you guys ready to go to work or did you leave the gear on the rig or what's happening? Oh, yeah. Well, we just came from the store, chief. And listen, tell your story walking, right? We, we got to be ready. Look around. All these buildings are full of people. These people are waiting for us and dependent on us. You well, got it written on your rig. We're a coming. You got that written on your rig. We're a coming. Hang on. What does that mean? We, we got to get dressed when we get there? Well, and and that, and we won't we won't mention the particular engine company number in, in the FDNY, the, the particular company. It, it, we'll just call them because you guys have like 7,000 fire engines as it is, the Pez dispenser. But I remember the call you're talking about. You were you were in, you were either covering the next battalion or on the outskirts of your battalion. And I think it was a gas leak call. And they they pulled up, right? And they went past, they went past the hydrant. It was normally, normally second due, but the first due engine was out on, on a medical call. Okay. So the second due engine got bumped up to first due. And they knew it. When the, when the run came in, they saw they were first due on a ticket. Yeah. And they came rolling in a little bit late, of course, because they're coming further. But then they just sort of like moseyed off the rig. The boss got off. He was he was sort of sort of just nonchalantly walking down the the the, the, the sidewalk. He had his helmet, his coat on, no bunker gear. The truck was already in because they were the normally first assigned truck, so they got there quicker. And I got on the radio and said, "What hey, did the company? What are guys sit? What are guys sitting with their elbows out the windows and they wouldn't even get off the rig? On the rig, the guy's elbows were out the windows. Yep. And also I said, "Where's your company?" Uh, a little pause. He said, "On the rig." I said. You get their asses off the rig. Get them off the rig. You're the first new engine. Let's get with the program here, you know? And they all scurried off the rig. I'm sure I'm sure they were all, you know, cursing me. But the point is, that, that's our job. What if what if the what if what if the cops did that and they said, ah, burglary or robbery in progress? Oh, we'll get there in a minute. We just ordered coffee. Well, we'll get there in a minute. And just know? how you said, how dare you? I mean, really, how dare you? You know, that's my thing. Look, I, and I always just say I was, I was the most flexible fire chiefs in the world, right? I remember, remember we, 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 you and I have had Calvin Allison. How many times you heard me talk about Calvin? One of my captains, the union president, his three sons are firefighters. Um, you know, when Calvin and I first got together and we we're kind of getting to know each other, I said, Calvin, I'm pretty easy. I say, here it goes, buddy. If I walk into your firehouse Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock to eat a cup of coffee and I walk in and your guys are already asleep in the recliners at 10 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, I'm coming in for coffee. You know what I'm going to do? He goes, I don't think I want to hear. I said, no, I'm going to walk real quiet and get my coffee and walk out. Because I remember what it was like to work in a firehouse and have, you know, sick kids at home or double, you know, mandatory overtime. I said, but the moment they dropped them tones, the moment they set them tones off, game face on, I don't care. Third time, same building today. I don't want to be the one having to talk to somebody from NIOSH or whatever going, well, yeah, this is the one time they didn't bring their tools or what, how many, and not to mention departments, but we've showed videos where they, they went into a high rise on a trouble alarm, killed, killed two guys and guys left them up there because they didn't have their gear. They, you know, I, I'm just, I, it's such a simple thing. You and I said, remember at FDIC, we we're sitting up on a big stage, right? We had the panel and I, they looked at me, it was my turn. You said something. And I said, Simple. Put your shit on. I don't think it's that difficult. 
to put your put to put your stuff on. You know, and and John, I'm fortunate. You know, and I mentioned uh, Chief Ryan Fetzer, where I'm I'm volunteer now at Wichita West. He don't put up with that stuff. He, you know, I'm, I I look at. I've been doing this a long time. I don't want to look over my shoulder and see him kind of looking at me, have cock going, really, Lasky, you don't have your shit. You know, I, I don't want to do that. We went to a mutual aid fire the other day and Burke Burnett, uh, Harold, the new chief there is a great guy. We worked together in Flower Mound and, and he was in Melissa. And, I, you know, we showed up, you know, you know, with, with the officer I had, you know, Michael Albert, and I was driving and, and Brent, a newer firefighter, first structural fire, Sean Holbert, which I posted a picture. We got off the rig. We showed up. We had our packs. We had our tools. We were ready to go. We didn't walk down the street and go, yeah, chief, are you going to use? We went down there looking to work. We went down there, checked in, hey, do it. And I remember I'm standing, like kind of leaning on my hook in the street going, come on, man, put us to work. I mean, we're standing there, packs on our backs, hoods tucked, everything right. When they said time to go, you know what it was? I leaned my tool up. I said, okay, mask on, hood, helmet, boom, gloves, let's go. You, we didn't go, well, let me, let me go run back down to the, uh, Sean. I'll, I'll be back. I will get my air pack. Cause I was driving. I had to grab an air pack out of compartment. I could have very often said, well, I was the driver on this. No, I wanted to go. I want to go fight fire and get inside an overhaul and work with the tools and shit. So that's my thing. You know, I know you've been that way. I've been that way. You know, put your stuff on, get off with your tools or with a line or whatever. But I, I want to say one thing, John, before we finish this one out though, too, I think some of the guys that do the, and I used to call it the lazy nothing showing thing. You know, there's a department not too far from me here. It's always interesting because they either pull up at an automatic fire alarm, you know, engine, whatever's out. I don't say, I don't want to incriminate anybody. We're out. I've got a you know three-story apartment building, uh, nothing showing from the front to the side. We'll be investigating. And 10 minutes later, here, another fire, another company pull up on my, you know, an automatic fire alarm. They'll say this, you know, engine fires out. Or you hear and just about nothing showing. And I'm like, really? You didn't say, you didn't say, you didn't get, you didn't tell me anything, you know, like you said before, not to belabor it. But that being said, that's one department that, that doesn't have any consistency. And that was my big thing at Louisville was I want us to sound the same when we size up. I want us to, you know, don't tell me it's got a comp roof. I know it's got a comp roof. I was a roofer. Don't tell me. Just tell, you know, keep it short and sweet, clear and concise. We're out. I've got a one-story single-family dawn. I got nothing showing, smoke showing, fire showing, whatever. We're going to work, or you know, we've got nothing showing on three sides. We're going to investigate, or whatever. But 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 I will say this, John. I think some of the officers and some of the chiefs that may do this because I had a guy not too long ago go, you know, Rick, I never thought about that till you said that. I've never really thought, and that's why we're talking about here. It doesn't mean you're a bad you know guy or gal because you were saying or you've been saying nothing showing push a reset button it, you know you know, acknowledge oh you know that's probably not the best thing if you never wore your seatbelt before i probably knew our seatbelt if you didn't wear your face piece before now we're burning i probably need to put my face piece on right we've talked about that it's always okay to to upgrade you know to change it upgrade as long as you don't go backwards but he, i remember him saying that real quick he says you know I, I never thought of it that's a good point well there you go go ahead Lee. And, and another Another important point here that ties into something that we both love to talk about and we, you know, is leadership. It really all comes back down to the company officer. The behavior of the company is the responsibility of the company officer. And I, and I got to tell you, most firefighters, just about everywhere, senior, junior, male, female, paid, volunteer, if the officer says, here's what I want, I'm telling you, most firefighters are going to do that. 99% of firefighters are going to follow the wishes of the officer, follow oh. the directions and the orders of the officer. And if the officer lets it be known, oh no, you don't you don't get on 48 engine unless you got all your gear on. And if, and if, and if you're not on the rig when I get on the rig, you'll be left in quarters. People know the rules right. and they follow the rules. So if firefighters are not getting dressed, the firefighters are getting off half dressed or getting off undressed and, and quickly getting dressed at the scene, that means the officer is allowing that. That means it's a-okay with him. And, and I know who you be- talk to. I know you don't talk to any of the firefighters. I know who you go to to talk to. Absolutely. I, I never yelled at a firefighter in my life. In my, and I see some guys do some some goofy stuff that I was like, what? I look around, I find his officer. Hey, come here. What is that? You know, I had a guy come out of a building. You're going to love this. I had a guy come out of a building with him in the 1A Battalion in the Bronx. I run in with another company. They're in there for a gas leak or an odor smoke or a smoke alarm or something. 18, meaning one engine, one truck, everybody else can return. I see the truck officer walk out. He's he's dressed. 
and I see the force entry team. One guy's got his gear on. The other guy's got a beret, a red beret, like he's marching in a parade. I'm like, what in God's name is that, Jack? Jack my driver. I don't know, Chief. He knew who the guy was, you know. I call the officer over. I said, please explain that to me, would you? Explain, explain that, that red beret to me, would you please? He said, Chief, I apologize. He's a good, good guy. He's a good guy. He's one of my senior men. He loves the job. And, but sometimes he gets a little crazy with stuff like that. I didn't notice it. I'm going to, I will take care of it. And you will not see that again. You will not see that again. I apologize. Good officer. A good officer. Well, now, in that case, there's a good officer. Something happened behind his back because somebody was taking a privilege, you know? You, you know, about two months later, I get a phone call one night from the captain of that company. Hey, chief, how you doing? It's Captain so and I said, what's up, Cap? He said, listen, I am mad as hell right now. I said, what's, what's going on? He said, I just found out about that call that you had back a couple of months ago with, with the beret, with, with so-and-so. I said, yeah. He said, why don't you why don't you let me know? I'm the captain, man. It's my company. I, should, you know. I said, listen, I spoke to your officer. It was an assigned officer. And he told me, chief, I will handle it. Doesn't have to go any farther. I will handle it. And I said, fine. And when I told him fine, that was my word, that it was okay. Him and me were okay, and he was going to handle it, and I was good with that. I couldn't have then went to you and said, hey, by the way, you know, your lieutenant was. Yeah, yeah. So I said, I apologize for you not knowing, but uh, maybe I should have mentioned it, you know, two weeks later after it was over. But, uh, well, but anyway, you know what? It's leadership, leadership, leadership. Company officers, whatever behavior the firefighters are displaying is the behavior that the, just like, just like the Marine Corps captain said, if, if you don't live up to the expectations and the rules and regulations and standards of your organization, you're simply establishing new lower standards. You let people wear berets, respond in without coats on, that's the new low standard. And, and you said something earlier that, that I, I agree with, like, like there, there's no, 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 no tomorrow that firefighters, I truly, they, they want to do right. And they want to please their officers. I, I very few, even the tough macho, they talk crap people. That's all just a show. The majority of the guys, the gals you and I have run across the good ones. I'll say this, the good ones and the great ones, they want to please their officers. And, and I want to finish with this. How many times you heard me tell the story about my Lieutenant Bill Allen me and Eddie Switowski, you know, like right now in Chicago, it's bl blistering cold, you know, wind chills. And when we would get that 20, 40, 60 below with the wind chill and all the warehouse, all those old warehouse, all those pipes, all the sprinklers would freeze for a whole week. They'd be frozen. And then all of a sudden the thaw and man, we'd run 40 plus, I mean, 40 water flows, troubles. And I remember Eddie Switowski, God rest his soul. Eddie was killed in the line of duty up in Constant uh, Township, Michigan. Eddie's a great guy. He was chief. Um, Eddie and I, I remember this, we're riding jump seats together and Bill Allen, 30 something years in the job then, God, I love this man. We're going to like our 20 something water flow. We know it's a, it's a busted pipe. And I, I look at Eddie, I go, is he? And he looks over, he goes, yes. What that meant was if I took a peek, I saw the back of Bill. I saw his shoulders over the, the doghouse, right? Helmet on, hood tucked in. He's already in his air pack, kind of as we're bouncing, going down the street a little bit over. I can't imagine him getting off the rig with his flashlight in his hand, looking up at me. I get off without, I just, I get, I get nervous right now. <laughs> and I love him. I respect him so much. I love him. I, I get nervous right now, even saying, I couldn't imagine getting off him looking at me. I'm like, oh my God, I just yep. can't, you know. So anyway. Amazing. Yep. So what we're talking about, right, is, you know, let's get better at the size ups, guys. You know, drop the nothing showing. If you're going to say nothing showing, and, you know, let us know. Let the rest of the, think about the rest of the companies coming in. You know, whether you're the BC, the chief, or, you know, whoever, I'm out. I got nothing showing on three sides, two sides of the front. Uh, you know, maybe someone can catch the rear for you. They're pulling up, hey, we got nothing in the rear. We're looking pretty good or whatever. Because, you know, an old Tom Freeman phrase from Chicago, don't get snookered. Don't let the building of the fire snooker you, man. You don't want to get, get caught uh, not ready. So tools, gear, be ready to do battle every time. You do that, I'll fight fires with you any day of the week. If you don't, I really got no use for you. If you're not ready to, like John, you said, how dare you? How, how dare you? But uh, yep. hey, yep. any closing thoughts? Are we good? No, I think we're good. I think I think we gave about 20 different uh, examples and, uh, and reasons for everybody expecting a fire, you know? Well, and then well, I, I want to do this before we uh, check out today. Um, I do want to thank, I, I think, I want to thank again, uh, Chief Jeff Bryant and uh, uh, 
uh, Chief Nick Dingus uh, uh, from Dingus Fire, Dingus, D-I-N-G-E-S, DingusFire.com, DingusFire.com, the Dingus Fire Company uh, for, for taking care of me and taking care of so many people. Um, they're a class act. They're a class business. If you're looking for something for your fire department, for your company, equipment, whatever, on the EMS side, medical side for your business, uh, they are a first class business great customer service and i'm gonna say it again john and you can you can back me up we don't get paid to say this we say this because we love them and we believe in them and i've always said before god i would love to find a company in the fire service like pierce or like sids mar some of the other manufacturers there's there's more but i'd like to find someone like dingus that backs up their stuff that when you call them they call you back they call you they call you in the evening i mean they just what a great group. So Dingus Fire, Jeff Bryant, Nick Dingus, thank you so much for everything you do. And folks, that you're not that's not going to be the last you're going to hear us talking about them. So, buddy, with that, uh, best way for them to get a hold of you? Chief John Salka at gmail.com. And I'm Chief Lasky at gmail.com. We want to thank you again for joining us. Spread the word. Make sure you get your buddy subscribing on iTunes or Spotify or go to my YouTube channel. We posted three ways for you so you can get it and get the information out there. Try to keep them about this length so you got time to listen on the way to work or you're working out or, you know, when you're doing, you know, work on the floor uh, at, at your body place or your career place. Um, you know, thank you for everything you've been doing through COVID with everything else. Uh, we never end any of our shows uh, without asking you to please keep the men and women and armed forces in your thoughts and prayers. Thanks for joining us. Be safe and God bless each and every one of you. Bye.